Hi all, Mass Banker from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today I'm here with my old washing machine, or at least what's inside of it, which is the drum, the rotating mechanism, and the three-phased 300 hertz, 200 volt motor. Now that is a rather special specified motor for yeah, a variant frequency down from 10 hertz and up to 300 hertz, and at a low line voltage. And it's all driven by this very small frequency inverter. So um, let's try to take it for a spin, see what's inside the inverter. And if everything fails and we do not get it to run from this, well, we'll just smack 230 volt three phased directly on it, maybe up to 400 from the big variac stack. And at 50 hertz, it should at least turn, turn around. So let's have some fun. This is the motor controller board for the washing machine motor. Takes a 230 volt AC in has a four wire bus connection seems to have what is probably not a isolation transformer for the motor but the control electronics power supply we have a bridge rectifier we have some dc bus capacitance housekeeping power supply and probably a small microcontroller but not too sure that it's the actual controller at as this seems to be some kind of integrated part where we have a heat sink underneath here with the controller out of its plastic chassis we can lift up the upper part here. We can see the apparatus type and uh, the supplier. This is made by Bytron, which uh, is a supplier of yeah, electronic circuits for household appliances. Now the um, DC capacitance, 330 microfarads. And um, it's a, let's see, what do we have here? Five amp, thousand volt DC, um, rectifier bridge we have sitting here. Now um, the blue transformer turns out to actually be a inductor. We can see we have our AC supply here. We have actually a small PCB fuse, the very thin line here that will blow up if we pull too much current. So it is a non-replaceable fuse but nonetheless has protection. But we can see the AC line goes through the inductor here and nothing is mounted on the secondary side or the other legs. We have the center taps of the bridge rectifier. And from here we have the DC bus going through the DC bus capacitor over to these two output legs, which go through a connector to the bottom part. Now the household power supply over here seems to have uh, 35 volt DC capacitance. So that is most likely 24 volt DC going down to the drive section. So let's take a look at what's underneath. It just have this uh, plastic connector plate, which has four spring terminals here, just connecting through down to the PCB below. Now these are the output connectors to the motor, and we can see these run up to uh, three output MOSFETs or transistors of some kind, and we have our common negative rail or positive rail going here, we can see from the other part here that that would be the plus. Okay, yeah, so this is the positive part going in common to the three output transistors. Other than that, we have our negative, which goes to the ground plane, and we have two household power supply connections here. The bus connection up here, we can see it's isolated from the rest of the circuit. And over here, it seems to be some kind of maybe a programming header or other kind of interface that was not connected while the machine was uh, as a running unit. Now, if we take this frame out of the heatsink, we get to see the controller, which sits down here, a free scale FPGA, most likely. And we have some kind of very integrated motor controller circuit here. Um, we have all the output pins we just saw, and then we have a lot of control pins. So um, this is actually soldered through this plastic chassis to the PCB, so it's not possible to see the markings on this. But as to making this run without just jacking a gate drive transformer directly to the outputs, yeah, I'm not too sure. To test out the uh, washing machine motor, I just have my good old trusty Siemens mini vector or micro vector, micro master vector uh, frequency drive here. The motor is sitting out there 
Um, I set it up with the parameters of a motor like that, but it's actually kind of weird. Uh, the ratings on these are, to say the least, um, not like your normal induction motors. But as we can see here, it's rated for something between 10 hertz to 310 hertz. Um, and that is kind of uh, interesting. And it also measures uh, pretty weird stator uh, resistances. So I can get it to start up with a, a preset frequency with the uh, potentiometer here. So if we put that at something like uh, the minimum frequency, around 10 hertz. And I try to start it with the switch here. Well, it starts turning. And uh, we can see that here, and I can try to turn up the frequency. And then it will um, go into some fault mode. Keeps running. Okay, this time it's actually stopped. Um, acting up very weird. But I can start at a higher frequency, let's say uh, 17. And we try that. And then it flips out uh, fault one again. Uh, I think that uh, the washer motor is actually damaged, but uh, this is also the uh, washer from um, our flooding of the basement. So yeah, water did get into that motor. As we could also see from the PCBs that they were actually water damaged. And for some reason, my large variac just keeps popping my fuses. I'm I got no idea why I'm having the soft start box in. I thought it was the inrush current, and uh, I'm not too sure why it's not working. So now there the washer motor is. And I'm thinking, uh, let's just plug it straight into a 3 times 400 volt AC, despite it being 2 times the voltage, and it's probably going to explode. Here goes. And that is pretty boring for plugging it into over... Ah, it's starting to smoke now. And there the fuse went. That smells pretty bad. <coughs> smells like somebody uh, grilled something pretty bad. All nice and burned. Yeah, okay. So that did not turn out to be the video I wanted. But uh, that's what it turned out to be. So until next time, see ya.